So I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about user interfaces. This is at the core of what we're building at CoFrame. And where we're gonna start is kind of very early in the beginning of the first instances of UI. So before there were any graphical user interfaces, there was command line. This did the trick, it got you the information you wanted to see, um, but it was very simplistic. Once this evolved into GUIs, we started to see a lot more creativity in ways that people could interact with the digital world. Then the emergence of the web completely transformed things. Um, you had websites that people could, from all over the world could, could view, and you had an explosion of interesting design ideas and ways that people could interact with the digital world and accomplish what they wanted to accomplish. Mobile, of course, enhanced this. And now we're at this stage with a completely new platform, and that is artificial intelligence. And the question arises, what do we do with user interfaces now? And the cool part about this is we kind of get to decide and build this, um, but it's a completely new platform layer, and it introduces a lot of really interesting new opportunities as it relates to the ways that us humans interact with the digital world, which is fundamentally the problem that user interfaces aim to solve. So I'm gonna give you my view on where things could go. Um, and in, in order to do that, I'm gonna take you into the future. So if, if you'll bear with me, um, we're going far into the future here. So in the ancient days of 2024, People like you and me, we called them designers and front-end engineers, tediously built our user interfaces. There was an issue. User interfaces were dead. They weren't adaptive and they weren't personal. And that's when CoFrame came along and introduced the first living interfaces, the self-improving personal user experiences that we know and love today. The first instances of this were auto-optimizing copy on websites and apps. LMs were very, very good at copy. And this is known as generative A-B testing. Soon, this expanded into self-optimizing images, user flows, and eventually the entire user experience. The under-leveraged valuable data from the UI was used to train powerful AI models for each business. And now, the entire internet is intelligent. So that's a little bit of a glance of where I think we could go. We've started to see a little bit of development in this area, but it's really been kind of just this first wave of code generation for UIs, and it hasn't been this full vision yet. There have been some really cool projects, to be clear, that have been put out. One example is v0.dev. This is a project where you're able to basically prompt UI code, mostly in React um, in this case. Another cool project uh, is screenshot to code, where you're able to drop in a screenshot of the user interface and then generate the code uh, that would be used to render this. Um, I mean, also GDB shared this demo in the very first uh, GPT-4 release doing a very small app. It was a really cool demo that blew a lot of us away. Um, and we actually, CoFrame, put out uh, an open source project called Coffee, which does something in the same vein, uh, which, um, which is, again, still in this first wave of UI code gen. So, some of the stuff that we're doing now um, and some of the stuff that we're seeing in general in terms of what could be interesting goes beyond this simple, like, um, I'm going to use AI to create, basically uh, speed up the developer workflow and create something that's closer to this notion of living interfaces. So uh, to give you an example of what we're doing with CoFrame, um, this is an evolutionary approach to uh, elements on a website. So the idea is you have uh, like a pixel you drop into your website and it'll analyze the site for pieces of copy, images, or UI it can optimize and then create progressively and evolutionarily these variants that get better and better based upon how users are interacting with your site. And ultimately you end up with this system that is highly optimized for your user base, fully on its own. A clear example of this would be image product optimization, or product image op optimization. Um, you have a system that's able to create variations of images, and then these images are then tested up against uh, your user base, and ultimately you're able to land on the best performer, but that's just one iteration. You do these iterations over and over again, and you have this self-optimizing system. So that's a little bit of a, of, of a look at what we're looking at, CoFrame specifically, but in general, an interesting trend that I'm seeing 
uh, by the way, of user interfaces. This is obviously applicable from images to copy all the way to layout design, the whole user experience, like I mentioned. And it's a really important thing, I think, to think about that not a lot of people, so far as I've seen, are thinking about. I think it's going to fundamentally to transform the ways that we interact with the internet. Um, like every interface that we touch and experience is going to feel alive and adaptive. And this is a very clear uh, future, to, at least to, to me, and I think it's something that's quite exciting and important. Um, so that's what we're building here at Comeframe. Uh, reach out if you're curious. We're working on liber living interfaces, this, this notion. Um, and other than that, thank you so much for having me. It's great to meet you all and hope to see you uh, after the event.